Welcome to Around the Weird. Here's your host, the museum curator of the strange and unusual, Mr. Nothing. Thank you, Mysterious Voice, and welcome back to Around the Weird, a booktube channel where I talk about all the unusual and out-of-the-ordinary literature that I found in my travels. Today, it is Poetry Thursday, uh, and it is also the last week of Spooktober, uh, so I wanted to highlight one final uh, spooky poem, poem or a poem that utilizes spooky elements uh, to tell one story or another. Uh, and today's poem is all about what seems to be disdain for the dead, or comparing the dead against yourself. Uh, I am referring to to the dead, uh, to the dead in the graveyard underneath my window by Adelaide Crapsey. For those who don't know, Adelaide Crapsey was an uh, uh, was an American poet, a uh, white American poet who lived between the late 1800s and early 1900s. She died uh, pretty early of tuberculosis and um, some maybe some similar diseases. Didn't have that long of a life, uh, but she did uh, go to school and became a writer and published a book of poetry uh, called Verses, where she just that's where most of her work resides. What's interesting is that she is known for popularizing the Senquain, which is um, uh, a poem that is like five lines and specific syllables in each line, compared against like the haiku or something like that, uh, which is which is fascinating. I, ha I hadn't heard of this uh, this poem poet before, and you think you would have, given that she invented a, a, a type of poetry, or or like popularized its its form. Uh, but I guess that's that's not really the case. So hopefully you learn something about this particular poet uh, today. Uh, and without further ado, let's talk about this poem. I will read it, do a little bit of analysis, and we will move on from there. To the dead in the graveyard underneath my window. Written in a moment of exasperation. How can you lie so still? All day I watch and never a blade of the green sod moves to show where restlessly you toss and turn and fling a desperate arm or draw up knees stiffened and aching from their long disuse. I watch all night and not one ghost comes forth to take its freedom of the midnight hour. Oh, have you no rebellion in your bones? The very worms must scorn you where you lie. A pallid, moldering, acquiescent folk, meek inhabitants of unresented graves. Why are you there in your straight row on row where I must ever see you from my bed, that in your mere dumb presence iterate the text so weary in my ears? Lie still and rest. Be patient and lie still and rest. I'll not be patient. I will not lie still. There is a brown road runs between the pines and further on the purple woodlands lie. And still beyond blue mountains lift and loom. And I would walk the road and I would be deep in the wooded shade and I would reach the windy mountain tops that touch the clouds. My eyes may follow but my feet are held. Recumbent as you others must I too submit? Be mimic of your movelessness, with pillows and counterpane for stone and sod. And if the many sayings of the wise teach of submission, I will not submit. But with a spirit all unreconciled, flash an unquenched defiance to the stars. Better it is to walk, to run, to dance. Better it is to laugh and leap and sing. To know the open skies of dawn and night, to move untrammeled down the flaming noon, and I will clamor it through weary days, keeping the edge of deprivation sharp. Nor with the pliant speaking on my lips of resignation, sister to defeat, I'll not be patient, I will not lie still. And in ironic quietude, who is the despot of our days and lord of dust? Needs but scars heating wait to drop. Grim, casual comment on rebellion's end. Yes, yes, willful and petulant, but now as dead and quiet as the others are. And this each body in ghost of you hath heard, that in your graves do therefore lie so still. In terms of analysis, that was to uh, the dead in the graveyard underneath my window. Uh, in, uh, in terms of analysis, there's quite a bit going on in this poem. Uh, 
Uh, I think um, in terms of narrative, uh, there isn't really a strict narrative. It's merely the narrator looking outside their window at a graveyard that they happen to live nearby, which is very creepy, a creepy place to live. And just looking at the dead, seeing how still they lie and noting that they can never be like that while they are living. They have a compulsion to move and a compulsion to rebel. Um, so uh, I, I think it's somewhat easy to see what's going on in this poem. Uh, um, but uh, a big old th a big theme of the poem is that of exasperation. You see that like, like the first line of the poem, which isn't really the line. It's sort of like a foreword. It's a, it's like written in a moment of exasperation. So kind of giving you a good idea going in what to expect from the uh, poem, and you can see like. In addition, in the first line, it's how can you lie so still all day I watch and never a blade of green sod moves to show where you restlessly you toss and turn. And so um, kind of getting at how the narrator can't really relate to these dead folk like, because they have a desire to um, to move. And you see that a little bit later as well. Uh, to take its freedom of the midnight hour. Oh, have you no rebellion in your bones? The very worms must scorn you where you lie. Which is an interesting line. Essentially saying, like, the worms are judging you for not wanting to move about. For not rebelling. For not for not um, exercising your right of freedom of movement or something like that. Even though the, the, the people in the graveyard are, are dead. Um, this, this, the narrator of this poem craves something more. Uh, they, 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 they can't just simply be still and, and, um, uh, like not do anything. And that seems to be a, re a repeated word as well in this poem. You see repetition featured. Uh, it says, lie still and rest, be patient and lie still and rest. I'll not be patient. I will not lie still. And that's repeated later in the poem as well, where the narrator says, of resignation, sister to defeat. I'll not be patient. I will not lie still. It's a good uh, mantra to repeat because, you know, you don't want to just simply take what life has to offer. You want to fight for what you, you feel you deserve or something like that. And so that seems to be the overall emotion of the poem of not resigning to what you're, what you're given in life, um, rather fighting for and hoping to accomplish all that you see before you. Uh, now, it's, it should be important to note the author's background when you're, when you're talking about this poem. The author was a woman who lived in the, um, the late 1800s, early 1900s. Um, and this was published around... Um, 1915, uh, shortly before her death, um, and uh, y you know, women women's suffrage was going on at that time. Uh, women in general were fighting for the for rights to be to be seen as equal. It was like the first wave, or maybe the second wave. I don't know the exact dates on those. But uh, the author's background is somewhat important because uh, for her to lie still means people are going to walk over her. Men are go maybe going to exploit her and take advantage of her, and she needs to constantly fight for. Um, her rights or anything really in life. So I feel like that's an unspoken element of this poem. Uh, it, it could just straightforwardly be her sort of criticizing the dead for refusing to move around. Uh, but I feel like there's that underlying layer of this poem. Anyway, those are my thoughts on uh, to the dead in the graveyard underneath my window. I have to keep looking up the poem because that is quite a long title. Uh, I always like the long titles because they're they're always usually strange or, or um, yeah, getting at a very specific emotion that the author might be feeling. Uh, but yeah, if you have any thoughts about this, let me know in the comments below. Would love to hear from you and potentially have a discussion about this. Otherwise, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so that more people can find out about this poet or this poem if they don't already know about either. Uh, and until then, I wish you the best of luck in your weird and exasperated travels. Farewell.